What became of the giants? At Learn English 724. Welcome to At Learn English 724. In today's story, we will discover the fascinating tale of the giants and what became of them. This intriguing story will not only captivate your imagination, but also help you improve your English vocabulary and comprehension. Listen closely, follow along, and enjoy the adventure. Let's get started. The giants had decided to invade Mount Olympus. They thought they could easily do this, for there were none of the gods who could hurt them. The giants were proof against all their weapons. They believed that this wonderful place among the clouds was theirs by right just because they were larger and stronger than the heroes. If the gods refused to give up their abode with its palaces, the gilded car of day, its stores of food such as had never been tasted by mortals and its weapons, the thunder and lightning, the giants were going to destroy the mount. That would have been a pity, for with Mount Olympus would go some of the most beautiful foundations the world has ever known. There was one of the gods, Apollo, who held the light of the whole universe in his right hand. It was not only that of the sun, but the light that shone in the hearts of the Greeks and made life brighter when they had wisdom and knew truth and could appreciate beauty. There was no question at all about this light being Apollo's and coming as a gift to men from Mount Olympus, because of his great deeds. There was a deep cavern on the green hillside of Parnassus in Greece where a goat herd, passing by its mouth in ancient times, had inhaled a strange fragrance that had made him able to speak with the knowledge of a seer. Apollo decided to preserve this cave. The city of Delphi grew around it, and Apollo sent a priestess crowned with laurel to be its oracle and welcome those mortals who wanted to breathe its magic air. But a monster of darkness, the Python, placed itself in front of the oracle and allowed no man to approach Delphi. Apollo, with his shaft of light, drove away the Python and made it possible for anyone who wanted better eyesight or keener hearing or more truthful speech to come to the oracle. That was not all, either, that Apollo had accomplished for the good of men. He protected the Muses, who were the daughters of Jupiter and memory, and could do all sorts of things to make happiness. They could sing, and draw music from the strings of the lyra, write stories and poems, and paint pictures. It was said, also, that the laurel tree belonged to Apollo for making wreaths with which to crone those who had done great deeds or made dark paths bright. But the giants could see little value in Apollo's light. They fought mainly of how to wrest riches and nectar and ambrosia from the gods, and they decided to try and kill Apollo and the Muses first of all. Thessaly had the wildest forests and the most rocky coasts of any part of Greece. It was a fitting place for the giants to meet, and it must have been a terrible sight when they landed and formed their ranks for battle. They say that Titius, one of their leaders, covered nine acres when he lay down for a nap on a plain. Certain others had a hundred arms limbs made of huge serpents and could breed fire. The worst part about this race of giants was the fact that their hearts were different from those of the celestials and the mortals. They had hearts made of solid stone which could never beat and feel warm. That was why the giants made preparations to climb up the steep sides of Mount Olympus. No one in all Greece dared to try and stop this war of the giants. They pulled up the mountain Ossa and balanced it on top of Pelion to bridge the way from the earth to the sky. They armed themselves by tearing up great oak and cypress, trees for clubs and carrying rocks as large as small hills with them. Then the giants climbed up and attacked the habitation of the gods. It seemed as if the giants were going to win, for even the gods were frightened and made haste to change their forms. The mighty Jupiter took upon himself the figure of a ram. Apollo became a crow, Diana a cat, Juno a cow, Venus a fish, and Mercury a bird. But Mars, the god of war, got out his chariot and went to meet the giants, and the others returned at last, for there was really no courage like theirs. The battle was still with the giants, though, for no weapons could kill them. Mars threw his spears and they rebounded from the stone hearts of the giants. No one knew what would happen, for certain of the giants went down to the earth again and brought up hills with which to crush the habitations of the gods. But just then a great idea came to Apollo. He believed that there were unseen forces which were quite as powerful as the giants' trees and rocks and hills in deciding this battle. So Apollo sent Mercury, the messenger with winged shoes, post haste with a secret message to Helios who lived in the palace of the sun commanding him to close and lock the doors. There was no light for the giants to fight by and they were well known to be hulking. 
awkward creatures, very clumsy about using their hands and feet. They needed the light. They had even made attempts to steal the summer from mortals that they might have more sunshine themselves, and they had succeeded in a way, for winter came upon the earth every year with its cold and shorter days. But the giants had neglected to bring any sunshine with them, and it was suddenly as dark as night on Mount Olympus. The giants fumbled about and stumbled and fell upon their own weapons. Taking advantage of this temporary rout, Jupiter sent a sky full of thunderbolts into their midst and they tumbled back to earth again. It was odd, but Apollo, whom the giants had thought so unessential because he protected knowledge and the oracle of Delphi and the tender muses, had conquered with his own special weapon, light. The giants were not particularly hurt by their fall. They were only driven out of the habitation of the gods, and they began taking counsel together at once as to how they might begin their war all over again. But they suddenly discovered that they had nothing to eat. In their absence, Ceres had cut down and uprooted from the earth the herbs that they needed to keep them alive and preserve their strength. Then, to make sure that their destruction would be complete, Jupiter covered each giant with a volcano. Each was imprisoned fast underneath a mountain and all he could do was to breathe through the top once in a while in a fiery way. That was the end of the giants. For a while they did some damage, particularly the giant Enceladus, whom it took the whole of the volcano at noon to cover and keep down. But gradually even the volcanoes became quiet, and there was more peace upon the earth. Mortals, for all time, though, have followed at 39, the example of the giants and have tried to use their strength in battle for pillage. They have destroyed beautiful buildings and put out home fires and interfered with teaching and music and painting and writing because they could not see the light shining in these. But what usually happens to them in the end is just what happened to the giants who started out to destroy Mount Olympus. They find that they have pulled a volcano down over their shoulders. Thank you for listening to today's story on Learn English 724. To improve your English vocabulary and comprehension, we recommend listening to this story multiple times. By repeating the story and practicing the words and phrases, you will better understand and remember them. Keep practicing and see your English skills grow. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below. See you in the next video.